on Friday afternoon, the Alarm Industry Communications Committee uh, issued a, or sent a letter to uh, Senate President Stivers and to uh, Speaker Stumbo uh, expressing concern uh, with, with House Bill 152. The AICC, whose members protect over 30 million residences, businesses, and sensitive facilities, and their occupants from fire, burglary, sabotage, and other emergencies, wrote in opposition to House Bill 152 because, in their words, it could adversely impact the thousands of Kentucky consumers and businesses that rely on alarm monitoring services to protect their lives and their property. Mr. Chairman, the reason for that is because the new generation of Internet protocol-enabled communications like the UVerse voice platform and wireless platforms may not uh, support third-party monitoring that relies on the switch network in order to transmit a signal when there is a fire or a burglary or, or other emergency. Um, the, uh, <clears throat> the other things I just wanted to share with you is th these are in AT&T's own words, and this is uh, regarding the IP-enabled service that this bill would allow them to replace the traditional switch network with in urban areas with over 15,000 households. It says AT&T makes no warranty that AT&T UVerse services for access to 911 will be interrupted, timely secure or error free or battery backup power will be sufficient to maintain the service throughout any and all power outages. With respect to the wireless service that this bill would allow to replace landlines for new homes and new businesses in rural Kentucky, quote, we do not guarantee you an uninterrupted service or coverage. We cannot assure you that if you place a 911 call, you will be found. Members of the committee, you may have heard that investment is going elsewhere, yet just three years ago, at and praised Kentucky's friendly environment uh, as encouraging aggressive investment in telecom. Uh, when asked earlier, the representative at and would not commit to a single penny of new investment over what has been spent in recent years in Kentucky. And frankly, Senators, and this will be my last word on this issue, which I know Senator Harris thinks is kind of a merciful thing, but frankly, Senators, no amount of additional investment is worth the life of one Kentuckian, nor can it justify placing urban and rural customers at risk during medical crises or natural disasters by allowing an involuntary substitution of less reliable, less functional, IP-enabled or wireless phone service for the highly reliable, highly functional, traditional landline service <coughs> that is their right today and unfortunately will no longer be their right the day this bill becomes effective. Mr. Chairman, thank you. I'll be happy to answer any questions that anybody